Welcome back, everyone, to Talking It Out. We have a great show for you today. Fresh off the beaches of paradise, we have Deandra in the house. But before we bring her on, you know how we do it. We got to start with our hot takes. Mike, I'm tossing it over to you. What you got? Yes. Uh, this most recent episode of Paradise, my hot take, or the point I want to discuss is the way that Thomas was with Tammy. I mean, bravo to Thomas. Bravo. We, we've had a guy on a pod. Love the guy. I mean. Is he redeeming that, himself? Like, I feel like I, he's, he's I redeeming think, himself. I think when we had him on, he completely redeemed himself. Now yeah. I think he's getting brownie points at this point. It was a class act on how to turn, how to say to someone that you're not feeling them. Yeah. And be respectful to them. Yeah. And still be respectful to the person that you are feeling. Like, justice for Thomas, it it truly was a, a class act. It was a master class on how to do that. Uh, so can we get a round of applause for the homie, the six foot six homie Thomas in the house? <laughs> Seriously, I mean, it's hard. No one wants to make anybody cry. No one wants to make anybody feel bad. We don't want to turn nobody down. We don't want to reject nobody, if, unless you're a crazy person, right? But the way that he did it, and how open and honest he was and how he shut that door down completely. He didn't lead her on whatsoever. I don't know what Tammy was saying in regards to, you know, you're my best friend. I wasn't on the beach, so that part was a bit weird to me, but I know she spoke about it on our sister station. So, you know, for the listeners, go and, check that. And the fact that they're friends now, that says a lot, right? Yeah. She's friends with not only Becca, but also Thomas, who it seems like we're all very upfront with her when it came to that. Bro, I've said it a million times and I'll say it again. The person isn't mad at you for rejecting them. It's just a hurtful time to be rejected. Yeah. In the long run, a person has more respect for you when you be honest. Yeah. I mean, this literally should be the norm for every single man out there. I mean, you don't ghost somebody, you know, you don't take the cowardly route, right? I mean, Mike, how I'm sure you've broken some hearts in your day, right? You've stepped up to the woman. You let her know, hey, listen, this isn't working out for whatever reason or the other. And you confront the situation like that's the way you do it. I feel like in that situation, even if the person, the man or the woman, they might get emotional. Like you saw Tammy, you know, oh, you misled me. You lied to me, this and that. Which I don't think he did. From what we saw, it didn't seem that way. You know what I'm saying? And I love the way Thomas handled it. Yeah, I love like. Well. I loved it. I mean, at the end of the day, like we always talk about, bro, the truth will set you free. Like if you go ahead and pull a Brendan, that's that's when you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> right. Like that type of behavior. It's like you're just asking for more stress. You know what I'm saying? Like, why not just be up front and just let her know? So right off the bat. So there was a let me tell you the story right quick. This the last young lady that I was dating. Right. We were dating long distance and I, I, I broke up with her. I flew to her. Mm. I didn't text her. You took the time. I didn't ghost her. I didn't FaceTime her. I flew to her and I still got shitted on. And I was like, yo, is there anywhere in the world of like- There's nothing you could do, Mike. There was yeah, nothing like, you could do. Yeah, it's you like, did you're, everything. You're wrong no matter what. You're literally telling them that you don't want to be with them. Like that's going to hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like there's oh, no sure. way you could take that in a good way, right? For sure. It's going to so, hurt. They're gonna get emotional regardless. Like even if you hurt that person, it is what it is. Like you're going in a different direction, but just being honest, like you said, they're gonna respect you more after the fact. And as you can see, they're all friends now. You know what I'm saying? So I think Tammy, at the end of the day, after she, you know, basically the the emotions were off the table, she was able to see, you know, what he was honest with me or whatnot, and you know, I respect that from him. Well that's what I'm saying. I think the lesson in this is, is that I'm applauding Tammy also. Because yeah, I absolutely. I feel that some people, one, are so cocky and are like, you know, they just make up an excuse in their head in comparison to, no, that person just doesn't see themselves with them. Yeah. You know? And it's, and that's okay. I mean, I think it's happened to all of That's what I'm saying. I think it's, people need to realize that. Yeah. It's ha it happens to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like Tammy, you know, can, can, show that growth where it's like, okay, you know what I mean? Thomas wasn't my guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's okay. Like not two people aren't always going to match like that. And they just did it. And I think she could find somebody else on the outside or. I, I think it's harder. For, well. I think it's harder for women that get rejected because women don't get rejected as much as men. Right? Yeah. 
we used to getting rejected. You know, like Dr. Joe said when he came out, he's like, hey guys, I'm from Claire Tasha season. Neither one of them wanted me. You know, <laughs> I love what he said. And that. He, it's okay. He gets back out there. You know, as yeah. you saw, he, he he's trying again. He's getting back on the on the bike. What does Aaliyah say? Dust yourself off and try again. There you go, man. There you go. What about you? What you're you you're only that? a loser if you, you stop trying, right? That's, I mean, that's truth. That is truth. It's yeah. just like, oh God, here goes my financial mindset. Coming. <laughs> you only got to win one time and you can win the yeah. jackpot. Yeah. You, you only got to win one time. People don't know, you know how many stocks I got that I've lost money on? But Lord knows. Listen, bro. Well. I, I won the jackpot with Rachel. So. I, I, I'm, I'm proof. I'm proof of it. I'm proof of I it. To, I need the hard eyes. Somebody put the hard eyes on me right quick. <laughs> All right, man. Let me get into my uh, hot take. And I mean, I think there's no denying it. Marissa and Riley, couple of paradise, right? Facts, facts, facts. Um, however, <laughs> however. I already know what you're going to say. <laughs> I mean, food and sex, the whipped cream. Listen, the, the, the toe sucking, I was, all I'm going to say is that just wasn't for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, if that was me, if I was Riley, I would not allow my significant other to do that on national television. Now, I'm all for it behind closed doors. Get your freak on, guys. I you, applaud you. Are you a toe sucker behind closed doors? If, if that's what it comes to, then yes. <laughs> now, time out, time out, time out. Wells did make a point. No, he made a great point. He made a point like, that it was nasty because of all the shit that was crawling around paradise. Yeah. But I think Marissa came out recently and said that, look, the toes were clean. We made sure of it. And that's what I'm about. Because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a neat freak. So I need Mar Marissa cleanliness. Needs she needs I need cleanliness. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if maybe they Lysol wiped his feet down. <laughs> I don't know what, but she she seemed like she was ready. So that's that's my only thing. Like I want cleanliness because, you know, Bro, it's just sanitary. It's version? just sanitary. What? Have you seen Forty Year Old Version? Yeah, of course. I, I I've never had my toes sucked. I think <laughs> that I would be like, oh, buddy, Steve Carroll in Forty Year Old Version, like accidentally kicked the girl. <laughs> like I just. But why? I, because it no. did, it wouldn't feel good, or you just think it's nasty? Like no, what? it's not even a look. Let's be honest, right? When we go to the bedroom, when this is me and my lady, the gets down is going to get down. It's, it's, it can get freaky. It's going to yeah. get down in there. I ain't worried Whip about Whipped cream, being nasty. chocolate, whatever the case may be. Yeah, maybe, the, that, the, maybe that the comes out. The nastier better. But like, I, I think I would get tickled. It might tickle me. You know, yeah, the tickles would get to me. And then I will just, I just have a knee-jerk reaction. Kick them. So <laughs> if you were on the beach and you were getting your toe sucked, I would you, say would, you would karate kick whoever was nah, doing it. Nah. <laughs> I would just stop it before it started. I would say, babe, let's not, you know, I appreciate it. Um, no, nah, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Well, I, I, mean, I did like what Riley said, uh, I'm, you know, getting too deep into it, but Riley was like, it was like, because uh, he put the whipped cream on her chest or whatever. Yeah. He was yeah. like, I'm letting him know that these are mine. I was like, that's my uh, boy right uh, there. Yeah, uh, he's, he's laying let claim right there. <laughs> but listen, I, I, I love them because they, reached a level of comfort and intimacy that I think yes. everyone on yes. the beach was jealous about, right? Um, I would again, again, I just necessarily wouldn't have done that. I would probably done that behind closed doors, but listen, <laughs> it, you know, maybe not for the ABC audience. I know probably people were, you know, Wells was talking about it as well, about it being nasty, but at the same time, he did make a good point as well. If you yeah. suck a toe in paradise, you could get engaged in paradise. Yes, yes. Right? Yes, so yes. I don't know. Things are looking good for them. I'm super happy for them. And be, they were themselves. They had fun. You know, that that's other people's problem that they don't want to see that. You know I've never heard truer words out of Will's mouth. No. You can suck toes in paradise. <laughs> you can definitely get engaged in paradise. Yeah, your relationship is going places. Okay. Yeah, you're in a very good spot. <laughs> very good spot. For I'm, sure. I've never sucked toes myself, bro. That's just... I, I'm just not a toe guy. I like looking, like if your toes are out and it's summertime, you got sandals on, I'm going to look at your feet, make sure they're pretty or whatever, but that's as far as I go. Right now, we're going to bring on the lovely Deandra to chat a little bit about us, about her experience on Paradise and all the drama that went on on the beach. Cue the Beyonce music, please. So how have you been? How have you been? I've been good. I feel like... People actually know who I am this time after being on Paradise, so it's been like a crazy difference than being on The Bachelor, but it's been really good. Very. That's cool, what I wanted cool. to ask you, just flat out, flat out the back. 
how does it feel, you know, going on Paradise and the point of going on Paradise, obviously you want to try to find a relationship, find love. Like you came out as like the Mother Teresa of the entire <laughs> situation, right? How does that I feel? Mean, I think it's the best possible outcome because, you know, after looking back, I see that there was no one on the beach for me. So it's like at least I got to be there for my friends and I got to make new friends. And I feel like I got my my patience tested in that. So I, I don't know. I think it was a good experience overall. It was the best experience I could have had. Yes. Un unravel that a bit more. You said you got your patience tested. What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely, it's a hard environment to be in when you're not finding a connection. You know, you see your best yeah. friend finding a connection, you see other women on the beach, and you're trying to push something that might not necessarily be for you. Um, so I think for me, it was hard because I was like, why can't I find someone? And it's just because the person that's not for me wasn't there. Look, I tried, I helped out on your post a couple of months ago before <laughs> you went on. I was like, look, if this woman goes to paradise, you got to go after her. I don't, they, they didn't don't listen. listen, Mike. They, they, didn't, don't they didn't listen. listen. They didn't listen. I'm, I'm perplexed, Mike. I am perplexed. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with the men on that beach, but <laughs> like they need, they needed to step up because Deandra, Deandra, maybe that, that has to be the case. There's really no excuse, but it's it no seems excuse, like fellas. No it's no excuse. Um, it just seems like you were the, you know, the rash, one of the rational people on the beach who always made great points. You narrated what was happening effectively it's like you seem to she said check them off right you you always seem to be there it seemed like you were the one consoling the women when they were like yeah. distraught emotionally i mean you made the boss move of getting rid of uh chasen and carl and their whack jewelry i mean <laughs> like i was impressed with you you were like you were there for love and you gave it a shot but in the end like even though you didn't find anybody it seems like your confidence was like showed through and yes. you were, you know, you were like, you, you just, you you know, your worth, you know what I'm saying? I it's like, even though that. you didn't find somebody there, like, you know, that your person is out there. Yeah, no, I appreciate that so much. And even post show, I feel like people are like, well, why did none of the guys like you? And none of that. And I'm like, well, what if I didn't like them back? Mm. Like, do we ever like answer the question of like, <laughs> can I also pick them? Like, why Takes is that to the tango. Like Ivan, why didn't you give her your rose? It's like, well, there takes two to tango here. It's a relationship. Mm. It's not a one man ship. So it's like, I don't know. Very true. Very true. How are you with your in your peer group, like off TV, your your peer group, your family group? Are you the voice of reason always? Are you the Oprah in the household, the situation or what? You know, what's crazy is I'm not even the voice of reason in my house. Like, I feel like I'm the opposite when it comes to my family, but I also have a family of some rational, like my sister's a lawyer, my other sister's an accountant. So it's like, there's a lot of rationale in my family. Um, so I'm more out there, but I think it's because I'm well-spoken. Like I can put my thoughts into words and communicate it. So I think that's why I come off so much more rational because okay. I'm like, let me just be really straight to the point. Matter of fact, I'm not really good at fluff. You yeah. Feel? Speaking of fluff, um, you approached, you actually had a, a unique thought when everybody was on the show going after uh, Brendan and Piper. You actually wanted to hear from Piper in that situation. Right. Yeah. What did you what did you feel about the answer that she gave the group in real time at that time? Like and has it changed since looking back at it? Um, you know, what's crazy is the reason I wanted to hear from Piper is because from the beginning, Piper was very clear the reason that she was there. So it seemed that she was on like one side of the spectrum and Brendan was completely on the other side of the spectrum as to why they were in paradise, which for me was almost hard to believe because I'm like, OK, if you guys have seen each other pre show, don't you think that you would know when each other is going on the show or know what the intention is going in. Um, so from the jump, Piper's like, only Brendan. I don't really want to talk to anyone else. So I was like, let's hear from Piper so that she can just solidify the reason that she's here, you know, to confirm and to have her side so that it's not just like, well, Brendan, Brendan, Brendan. It's like, well, all Piper. Like, she deserves to have a, a voice and to speak up for why she's here, not just be a side thought. Well, definitely so. I want to Absolutely. pack that a bit more with the two of them. Uh, last week on our pod, we spoke about, or I spoke about, you know, friends have to... I still can call Brian out. Brian can still call me out as a friend, right? And right. on the show, we didn't see, like we saw Ivan, I think about when Natasha asked him directly. Yeah. You know, Ivan, tell me that wasn't fucked up is what Natasha was asking, right? And Ivan was, he was stuck between a, hard, a rock and a hard place. You know, that's his friend yeah. Brendan, but also he saw what happened. So how do you feel about, you know, as friends calling friends out? Or what is your take really on that? I'm really big on calling friends out. I think that that's a real friend, someone who's able to hold you accountable. And like with the Ivan situation, you know, again, not everyone's good with confrontation. I feel like a lot of people like categorize it as confrontation if you bring up a point that's truth or valid. 
And it's not always confrontation. Like, I feel like the guys, in their eyes, maybe Brendan thought I was coming off aggressively. And it's like, honestly, I was just being honest and direct with you. So I think that there's a difference between how people think, because a lot of guys are like, well, that's my buddy. I don't want to speak on it. It's confrontation. But I'm like, but you can also hold people accountable. That means you're a true friend. That means you're not just going to sit by the wayside and be blindly loyal to somebody. Yeah. Now, so. we had heard uh, Riley, and he mentioned, and even Becca mentioned, that it seemed that people that weren't around that situation were, quote-unquote, bamboozled. Um, are we missing anything? Like, are we missing anything in terms of, like, is there any salvaging their behavior? Or was what we saw on TV pretty much how you experienced it? Because it seems like you were a little bit more in the mix than Riley was. Riley was was busy with Marissa, but... We're creaming it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're creaming it up. They disappeared for hours. I was like, where are they? Um, so as far as what you saw, I mean, it's it was pretty cut and dry. Like, yeah. Brendan had a relationship with Natasha. It seemed like a budding relationship. It seemed like it was mutual. From what, you know, I could see they were always together. Piper comes down to the beach and it was an automatic switch. It's very obvious and apparent, you know, that they had some kind of relationship before. The conversations he was having with Natasha prior wasn't adding up to, oh, we're just friends, Natasha. Like, you should have seen this coming, da-da-da. It wasn't adding up. So, I mean, I feel like what you saw is what you got. And I don't, you know, looking back, I'm like, why can't I remember the, the reason that people, you know, didn't confront Brendan and Piper the same way that they confronted Chris and um, Alana? But then I think about it, and I'm like, well, it's because everyone was friends with Brendan, which is a really good point that Demi made. So no one wanted to have the conversation with him, you know? I think people saw him happy and was like, let's. Well, I think like we spoke about earlier already is that if you're a real friend with someone, you're going to call your friend out when they do something wrong. Oh, we got a guess. That's what I'm saying. On the Natasha and Brendan aspect, we saw that you had tweeted out about, you know, Brendan, first off, I love a woman who can call somebody out because I I will call somebody out in a heartbeat myself, right? Mm -hmm. You called Brendan out and you for shaming black women. Can we unpack that a little bit? Absolutely. So I have no personal vendetta with Brendan. I think that, again, from the jump, I've always been honest about the situation with him and Natasha. I have no personal beef. And it's crazy because on the beach, I was respectful to him. I communicated to him. But hearing the episode and hearing what he was talking about me and saying, like, oh, Deandra's just angry because no one's talking to her. It's just crazy to me because why is it that when you're describing Demi, it's, oh, Demi's a character. Whatever you had to say about Jasenia was about Jasenia, whatever. But when it comes to me and Natasha, it's we're undesirable. No one's talking to them. Mm. Like, why is that the only comeback that you have for why we're acting the way that we are? It didn't really make sense. I'm like, it has to do something that's deeper than just like you talking shit about someone. Why do you feel that is? Why do you feel that he can come at you and Natasha, but not someone else? And that's what I'm trying to understand. Cause I'm like, it has to be a deeper issue like, think about it. Of all the things that you could say as a response for if you wanted to talk crap about me, I'm sure there's plenty of other things. Oh, Deandra's just way too confrontational. Oh, Deandra's too aggressive. Like, you could have worded it in other ways, but it's Deandra's mad that no one's talking to her. Like, the way that he worded it was so grimy to me. I'm like, why are you constantly trying to paint this picture that me and Natasha are just so undesirable on this beach? That's the, well, with that damn strain, the truth. Uh, Thank you. At, at all. I think <laughs> yeah. Brian and I both know that's not the truth. <laughs> like, <laughs> definitely, definitely not. Brendan, that ain't He's the an truth, idiot. bro. Like, <laughs> that ain't the truth, homie. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think all. that hurts. Like, I'm not going to talk crap about someone and be like, well, they're just mad because no one on the beach is talking to them. I'm going to be like, well, they're just mad because they can't handle me and Piper really liking each other. You know, something like that. It's like, where does this insult come from? It just seems to be deeper rooted. Yeah, I think and that just goes, I think that just goes to show his insecurity and, you know, he was just defensive in that situation. You know? Yeah. He, he snapped back to Marissa and he was just very, be very being very snappy with you guys when it came hey, to hey, the question. You better watch it. You better watch it when you snap to Marissa. That's funny Arnold, because Arnold if Riley was there, come out. <laughs> if Riley was there, it would have probably been a different yeah. story. I Brendan agree with that plan. too. Little bit, a little bit, a little bit less Riley bass in his voice. Yeah. And you know what's crazy is I feel like Mar- um, Marissa was talking to him more aggressively than I was, but it's crazy because he never mentioned anything about Marissa. And I wonder if it's because he's friends with Riley, you know, so it's like, oh, I don't want to talk crap about your girl, but I'm going to talk crap about Deandra, who was respectful and honest with me, but okay, whatever. R- Riley, don't play that. Deandra, I wanted to ask you about yourself because for whatever reason, Brian and I just have no idea whatsoever. The guys were just lost for words. <laughs> I, yeah, we don't know what to say in that regard. I mean, we really don't. But for women watching, like, it has to, does it feel some type of way when you see your friends and you see, you know, let's say coworkers, you know, 
getting booed up and stuff and you aren't, does that make you look within? And if not, why does it not? And like, how could you help other women and men with that? Um, I think looking on, uh, definitely on the beach. Like I even said it, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm jealous of what Riley and Marissa have. And like, that's my best friend. And in the moment it's okay to feel like that. But I just, you have to reassure yourself that when your time comes, your time is going to come. Like if I had tried to force it with someone on that beach, I wouldn't be happy today. Cause it's nice. like looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? Like my person's not really there. And in the moment you get caught up trying to make connections cause you see people make connections. So I think that for people watching as a way to like remind yourself what's meant to be is going to be, you can't force relationships. And if you force yourself and you end up in something prematurely, that's not for you. You're going to be in a bad situation worse off than if you just stayed single and believed in yourself and confidently waited until your person came. You have a good head on your shoulders. Yeah. No, it makes <laughs> I love that. We're saying she was the, like one of the most rational people on the show. Like that is a, a very <laughs> level headed way to think of what you just yeah. said. It's not always that easy though. You know, there's so, going to be nights when you cry. They're going to be nights where you feel insecure, but it's like, you just have to remember the bigger picture. So what, what is your type? Like, is there anybody in bachelor nation? Like maybe that's more or less your type that if they would have come on the beach, maybe you would have connected with, uh, on the, on a, on a romantic level. I think that, I mean, there's different people that are my type. Like, I mean, obviously, you know, Mike, you're a good looking guy. I feel like if I saw you on the beach, I'd be like, what's up, Mike? Um, my type is definitely well-spoken. I like a manly man. Um, I thought Thomas was really cute. Um, who else? I mean, I guess there's not really that many men in Bachelor Nation that just like catch my eye. Damn, she shitted on y'all. <laughs> so No, I'm just like, I don't know. Cause I don't really watch, no, but I don't really watch like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Like I never really watched it before. So it's like hard for me to keep up now. Um, but fair. I can't think of anyone like off the top of my head. Brian, you're a good looking guy, but you're married. So, I mean, I can't no, think I'm, of I'm off limits. I'm off limits. But Mike, <laughs> but Mike and Deandra, I don't know. You guys would look cute together. That's all I'm saying. Hey, <clears throat> Brian, all I'm going to say is if I was on that beach, I would not be scared. <laughs> I, I I hope you would, man. I hope I hope you wouldn't for sure. Um, there was also some some tea. Uh, your your boy, Ivan, who you guys became really good friends on the beach. Uh, he had mentioned one of his friends as possibly a, a suitor for you, uh, his boy Damar. Is that yeah? Is that Everyone, something that could possibly happen? I think Damar is a really cool guy. Um, I don't know because like we haven't really gotten time to hang out in person. I'm a very picky person. I'm just gonna throw that out now. I'm like super picky, yeah, and I just be, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like I'm not so. just easily taken away by people. That's perfectly fine. I think that being a selective individual is is a great thing. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Period. So it's Definitely. like, it's hard for me because I'm also like, I friend zone everyone first and then I love them. So I'm like, I'm gonna friend zone you, but then it's like, okay. Then <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, man. Would you change anything about your experience while you were there on Paradise? No. At first, when I looked back, I was like, well, did I do everything? Like, but I think this, I stayed true to myself. So I wouldn't change anything because honestly, I was super true to myself. Looking back, I'm like, that's an accurate representation of who I am as a person, so I wouldn't change anything. Well, I want to go back right quick. You said that you friend zone everybody, uh, you know, for the most part. Why do you feel that is? I don't know. I think it's because I'm so picky. I wouldn't want to like try to like show that I'm into someone before fully knowing them, and then have the weird, awkward conversation where I'm like, oh, actually, this is not really it. I'm really bad at turning people down, so I'm like. Let's just be friends, and then <laughs> if something more develops, it develops. Yeah, you feel? But, but when you put someone in a friend zone, they're are they stuck in that friend zone? Are they stuck forever? <laughs> it just depends how friend zoned I zone them. Oh, there's like, levels of friend zone. There's zones. levels. There's there's levels. Oh, Brian, there's levels. <laughs> so can <laughs> we can we get the Deandra breakdown of of friend yeah, levels? Yeah, these levels of <laughs> talk to us about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. There's like friend, like okay, we talk sometimes, but like when we're around each other, we're kind of flirty, but it's almost like sister brother, but it's not really. But then we have brother friend zone, which is like I'm like, oh, I love you so much, babe. Like if I call you babe, love you, it's like probably not it, because I'm not gonna say that, you know. Um, if I call you boo, that's probably your past, the, the brother friend zone. But I feel as <laughs> if, like we have a little bit of banter back and forth, but we don't talk too much. That's like, maybe you can come out of that friend zone. Okay, that for sure. Gotcha. For sure, okay, for sure. okay. I understand that one. So basically what you're saying is, Damar, you may still have a chance unless she called you bae before. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, um, you're funny. You are funny. You guys are really, you're trying it. You're trying it today. Have you, so... 
DeAndre, seriously though, you you have a great head on your shoulders. Um, Thank you. You speak well. You're intelligent. You seem to be emotionally mature. What has your dating history been like? Because we all we've been able to see is you know Paradise, which didn't work out. Uh, those guys were not the smartest. Peter wasn't the smartest. Like what what's your your dating history like? Um, people want to know. History. People want to know, well, I have a history of dating like very cocky men, like very entitled men. Um, I would say like my most recent ex, like he played in the NFL. So he was very much like a manly man, like hockey. And I felt like I thought that's what I wanted. But the older I get, I'm like, that gets me in hot water because look, I'm obviously on a dating show because it didn't work out. So my dating history hasn't been amazing um, because I'm picky. Now I'm just like, no one talk to me. And my husband is going to find me and he's going to harass me until I become his husband. That's just going to be good. I'm sure they're lining up right now as we speak. Um, <laughs> I want I want to actually get to a, a, a serious topic. Um, going back to a negative with Brendan, um, he had mentioned disgruntled females and you being a quote unquote disgruntled female. How do you feel? Because we've actually gotten slack in our earlier days when we first started the podcast, we had mentioned the word female and you know, we got called out and deservedly so, you know what I mean? So how do you feel, how did you feel when you heard those words coming out of his mouth and particularly to the word female? At this point, I don't think I'm offended by anything he says, because obviously he <laughs> wasn't in the right mindset. Like yeah. he was obviously, he felt cornered. He felt, I just felt like it was him categorizing all of us on the beach. Like anyone who's not Piper, you're a disgruntled female. Like if you come at me and you talk to me about anything, that's not what I want to hear. You're a disgruntled female. And it's like, Honey, we're not we're not angry yeah. like at you as a person, but we're angry at the situation. Like we don't hate you. Maybe Brendan off the beach, you're a great person, but like Brendan right here just should have been honest from the jump. Yeah. Um, should take care of your business, handle your business, baby. But I mean, when I heard it, I wasn't surprised. He already said I was mad because no one talked to me. Joe and his disgruntled females, it was just like, Oh, this is another another thing that Brendan's saying. Another thing that Brendan's saying. Continues to put his foot yeah. in his mouth. Did you feel I'm like please? Do you feel that Joe was being a bully? Because like uh, some people were thinking that Joe was coming a bit too hard. What was your take on that? No, Joe is not a bully. Like well, Joe is one of the most level-headed people. And I feel like he doesn't really get involved in anything unless he has like something to truly say. So the fact that Joe even felt like, okay, let's go have a conversation kind of shows like it's to a level where someone that he cares about is very hurt, which is Natasha. Um, I don't think that Joe was aggressive being there in person. I feel like Brendan felt attacked. And so, so he started to get higher and then like the girls around him started to get higher, you know, and it just starts to escalate. Um, that was the kind of situation, but I don't think that Joe was being too aggressive. I think that he just wanted to hear the truth. Yeah. From what we saw, Joe wasn't ne necessarily privy to everything that went on with Natasha. But once he sat down with her and she actually explained what was going on immediately, you guys right. confronted him. You know what I mean? So exactly. And that was his good friend. Yeah. So. And I, and yeah. And again, like once someone starts to raise their voice, the next person's going to raise their voice. Cause it's like, what am I going to do? Like whisper to you when you're yelling at me. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it seemed I, aggressive, but it wasn't. I want to talk about that. Well, you know, about being friends with other guys and girls, we have the bro code. We got the girl code on this show is kind of different, right? You go on this beach, you know a lot of the people, you may not know them as your best friend, but you know a lot of these people. It, could a guy go on a, is it okay for a guy to go on a date with you? If you say yes, obviously, that his friend just went on a date with you? Because we see that with Natasha and Joe, uh, Dr. Joe, right? But he also knows Brendan and some people were talking about that. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's completely fine. Yeah. Like, let's also look at the fact that Brendan is happily with somebody. So it's not like, oh, you stole my girl, now I'm single. It's like, hey, I chose someone else, like Natasha's for whatever she wants to do, let's move forward with it. Cause I don't think it's necessarily a problem. Like if my friend talked to someone and was like, hey, he's not the one for me, I would feel a little bit weird about it. But at the end of the day, if that's your soulmate and you feel like you have a super strong connection with them, like sometimes you just run into the wrong people before you run into your person. So Dr. Well, Joe going on the date, I think it was fine in my eyes. So you don't have a problem with him going on the date? Is, is that I what you said? That, no, I don't think it's a problem because it's not like Brendan is single now. He's with somebody else. He chose somebody else. And Natasha deserves the chance to get to know someone else as well. And I think that her yeah. and Dr. Joe seem to get along well. So I'm like, why is he going to stop that just because of the bro code? Definitely so. I mean, is it there... seems like he, he was 
he was phased though. Like he, he was wouldn't phased. stop, wouldn't stop thinking about it. So like, I want to know how you feel about that. Like in a situation where in that we're talking about Joe, who, do, who does he side with? Does he go with his boy after knowing that they had a conflict? I mean, do you continue on trying to date Natasha? Like, how would you handle that situation if that was you? Like you were between. I think it's all relative. Cause it's like, it depends. Cause sometimes when you look at someone, you're like, oh my gosh, like first sight, it's like, I know I just connect with this person. So if that's something that Natasha and Joe had at first and they wanted to explore it more, I'm like, what is loyalty? Like, what is the definition of loyalty? If it means standing in the way between someone I really like, just because you didn't agree with something that they were talking about or you didn't like them. Um, so I think if there's just levels to it, I think that in his situation, him and Natasha <laughs> seem to, to hit it off. Yeah. I know yeah. I'm giving great answers. Natasha got levels, bro. She got levels. <laughs> she got everything. levels. She had fun. And I like, it was nice seeing her have fun versus, you know, yeah. you got levels, so like the rest of us. Yeah. So I want to ask both of y'all this, Brian. I want your thoughts on this too. At what point, especially for you, Brian, like at what point does someone like your homie, like you can't go beyond that? Like See, everybody, here, just because you meet a dude, don't mean that he your best friend now. You know what I mean? No, but I mean, based on what I've seen on social media, they seem pretty close. I mean, they're doing TikToks together and oh, okay, all okay, kinds okay. of joint ventures and collabs Yo, and Dr. whatnot. Joe's hilarious, by the way. So no, yeah, <laughs> Dr. Joe's a great guy, but it seems like they were, you know, they were boys, okay, right? So they boys, and they doing For TikToks. me, it's like if you're really on the side of your boy and like you're gonna remain friends and you know the history between Natasha and Brendan, it's the first date, right? So essentially, it seems like he just wanted to, at that point, once he got phased, he was going to cut ties with her right there. And that's probably the right place to do it rather than drag it on and gain some feelings. And then, yeah. you know, you're in a pickle at that point. It's like, holy shit, I like this girl, but he's my boy. So maybe not even let it get to that point. I agree with that. Yeah. Wait, but I have a question. So, Brian, so say you became really good friends with someone on The Bachelor, like you had a best friend and you guys are both dating Rachel or on The Bachelorette. Okay. Um, and he was like, yo, like it didn't work out for me and Rachel. Just send yourself home. Like you're my bro. Like you're my really close friend. Would you send yourself home? So wait, th I always, I always talk about context. So you're saying like, are we like boys or like me and Mike, let's say like, your best friends, like say your best friends and you both came on the show and you're both falling for Rachel and you guys are like top two. And he's at the point where it's like, bro, like if she doesn't take me, like you got to send yourself home too, because I can't see you there. Okay. Like, it's really going to affect me. It's going to affect our friendship. Are you picking Rachel or are you picking this friend? And Mike, why are you looking like that? See, I, for, yeah. me, for me, it's like I have the longer history. So in a similar fashion, I have the longer history with uh, with Mike. So it's in a situation where it's like if I just met Rachel, like, yeah, she's great. We got along great. But at the same time... <laughs> First of all, first of all, the, the producers are texting me. This is a hypothetical situation right now, okay? I haven't met Rachel. Now, granted, if we're in if we're in deep, me and Rachel, then it's like always. See, always. Oh, okay. See, <laughs> see y'all trying to get me in trouble. Y'all no, trying to get me in trouble. Damn self in trouble right now. <laughs> what you trying to do? Brian, talk about bro code. But I'll, I'm going into that that Brendan. She just met, he just met Natasha. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah. side with my boy. But if I was, but if I was in deep with the girl, like already, and let's say I didn't know that my boy and that, and her had issue or had issue or had a relationship in the past. Like we talked about that before, right, Mike? It's like, what if one of your boys like had dated somebody that you had just met and you didn't know they dated 10 years ago? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm, about to, I'm about to respond to this question. I'm just ready. I'm ready. Put me in coach. Go for it. Go for it. First off, that's not my homeboy. Then, if he, if my homeboy says, "Hey, if I leave," in your example, right, DeAndre? If I leave, you gotta leave too. No, my boy would be like, "Yo, I really like her. I don't see it working for us. I want the best for you." That's what my boy would say. Yeah, I want the best yeah. for you. And then it's upon it's upon me myself to decide: Can I get over the fact that if it's the last two that they went to the fantasy suites or whatever, that that's a point me, myself, and I cannot decide that. My homeboy should be like, if he loves me as a homie, he should be like, bruh, at the end of the day, I want the absolute best for you. Period. Okay. So that's time out, so time out, so time out. But what if you go ahead and have that relationship with that woman and you're like, you're like Marissa and Riley. I mean, what if you're there watching all that? You know what I'm saying? Like, are you gonna be cool down the line? Like with like, them I getting together? Like if I try to holler at Marissa and Riley and Riley's my boy, is that what you're saying? Like the scenario you just said where, yeah. you know, it's like you say, 
dude, go ahead and go after her. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you yeah. going to be okay if now all of a sudden you go on ahead and you're in a serious relationship with this woman? Like, are you going to be able to have a friendship with that guy as well? Sure. I mean, okay. now obviously, it's like it's like what uh what we said on our. I've never said this publicly, but we said when we were on Hannah Brown season, we was like, yo, whoever is Hannah's person, we still gonna be boys. You just can't make you can't make that joke. You can't say, hey, bro. You know what I'm saying? I was giving your girl like the the, the love. You feel me? You can't say nothing of that nature. That's the not only joke. giving the girl. <laughs> I'm trying to be politically correct, right? You can't say that joke. That's the only joke you can't say because that's like going too far. Yeah. But all oh, other jokes, you know, regular jokes are cool to say. But you, if that was the case with Marissa, Riley, and myself, let's say I was using your example, I could I would be cool. But like Riley, she obviously liked the muscles on me. Do your thing. You feel me? And then at the same time, it's understood I can't crack jokes because that's disrespectful. It's all, it, it's he my homie. I can't disrespect my homie. Uh, Deandra, let's get into your time on not only Bachelor in Paradise but also The Bachelor. How did how do you feel you changed? Uh, you know, going from The Bachelor to Bachelor in Paradise, and how do you compare both experiences? Okay, so my time on The Bachelor, I've said it kind of like a couple times throughout the years. I didn't have the most fun on The Bachelor. I felt like it was a lot of stress. I wasn't really myself. And I think I was conforming to what I thought Peter would like. And I felt like that really just shot me in the foot. So coming to Paradise, I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to be myself, you know? And if the guys like me, they like me. If the audience likes me, they like me. And if they don't, then they don't. And I know that it's actually for who I am. And I felt like it was such a better experience just letting my hair down. I didn't worry about what I was saying. I didn't worry about like, oh, is it going to look bad if I say this or that? Or, you know, is a guy going to think I'm too crazy if I'm like being funny in myself? Um, so I think it just made the experience that much better. And it made the connections that much more real. And I don't know. I had a really good time on Paradise comparatively to The Bachelor. Love it. That's always the best route. Just be yourself and yeah. say it and leave it. This is what it is. Let the cards fall exactly. where they may. Yeah. yeah. So last question, DeAndre, before we let you go, what's next? This is such a, an open question. I don't know what's next. <laughs> in a, I don't in a know. Utopia, in a utopia, what's next for you? The next three steps. Uh, and a utopia, what's next for me? Well, what's next is I move on, maybe away from reality television, maybe into something more smart, like... Smart decision. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more into something that I like, like hosting and being on television. Maybe I find my soulmate. Maybe I go on a date with some guys. I don't know. That's what's next. Living life to the fullest. Living your best life. That's that's what it's all Living about. Living my best life. Living your best life. Well, I love it. Uh, we appreciate you on today. And you were nothing less than a godsend on Paradise. Let us see it. And whatever guys, next, guys, get it together out there. Come on. Bro. Get it together. <laughs> Brian, I appreciate you guys. No lie, Thank they you. was tripping on Paradise. Like tripping, they, man. They, Peter was they tripping. Let a sleeper go. Like, Peter was tripping. Everybody on Paradise was tripping. I don't know. I love you guys. Thank you My so mother. much, and thank you for having me. All okay. Right. Brian, I love having Deandre on. She was like a breath of fresh air. She was yep. level-headed, and spoke her mind, and was respectful all at the same time. I feel like it's kind of hard for people to ascertain. What about you? Yeah, I think she, like, if you watched her on on paradise i feel like she did paradise the right way you know what i mean like she went there she was open she made a ton of friends she was um you know she called people out when they needed to be called out uh and she just didn't make a connection it seems like like you said she has a level head on her shoulders and it's a situation where it's like look my person isn't here i know my worth i know my the love of my life is out there and it just wasn't here and like yeah. she can go home and sleep well at night knowing that you know what i'm saying completely so she did not make a, she did not make an ass of herself. She correct. Did, she did paradise, like you said, the way you're supposed to do it. She was open minded, uh, called people out, like you said, but then also she wasn't trying to get attention. You know what I mean? Correct. No, she wasn't like, like doing no crazy shit just to get attention. She was just being herself. You can literally see DeAndre's personality. From the show. And I love what she said that she didn't force any relationships. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's not the way relationships should work. It should be mutual connection and just you guys coming together. And, you know, when it was her time to go home, it wasn't like she was going to make, make one last ditch effort to, you know, try to get a rose or whatnot. She's like, look, my, my, there's no connection for me here. And that's fine. You know what I'm saying? And like, like just being real about that, like, I mean, Tons of brownie points for her, for sure. Definitely so.
it was cool to hear her talk about how in Peter's season she was trying to appease Peter. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, over the last two years or so, however long it's been, on Paradise, she's fully grown into herself. Yeah. She's fully grown into the woman that she's meant to be. And she's oh, no. it, not changing it, it, for nobody, which is amazing to see. You could totally see the growth, you know, from Bachelor to Bachelor in Paradise. And, you know, that's what it's all about, right? You know, using, you know, this experience to help you out and to help you grow and to become a better person at the end of the day. And that's, you know, that's what how people should look at it. Completely agree with you, homie. We'll see what it's out there for her next. I don't know. I, I, honestly, lost their words for what these guys. Step are up, gentlemen. Step up. <laughs> yeah, really. To all of our listeners, thank you for tuning in to today's episode. And you know, we always love to hear your opinions, your stories, and your insight. So please don't forget to like, comment, follow, message us on social at Talking It Out BN on IG and on Batch Nation Pods on Facebook and Twitter. And yes. We read every single comment on there and look at the DMs as well. Uh, talking about DMs, I ain't checking none of your DMs no more that you sent to me until you get that subscribe. So, you know, I always tell y'all to message us. Well, we've listened to your messages. We've listened to your comments. So we have a big news coming out uh, that'll be coming out tomorrow, Tuesday, if you're listening in real time today. Make sure you stay tuned because you're going to love it. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to right now. Baby, don't DM me no more till you hit the subscribe. Holy